Good God, what a bloody mess. This is valuable. They must have been in a hurry or they'd never have left it behind. This one won't be going anywhere anytime soon. Someone was wounded here. It looks like another person dragged him off. Maybe there'll be some tracks. This way. Another clue. I'm on the right track. Blood. Charcoal burners. Someone must have seen or heard something. No. Clear off. Let me sleep. I'm on the right track. It looks like blood. I'm on the right track. Another clue. I must be going the right way. Who are you? Do as I say, and you might walk out of here alive. What? What's that? 
What do you mean? Don't worry about it. Just answer my questions, and I might even help you. Well, if you say so. Who is it you work for? Who did the wagon belong to? To Menhart. He's some kind of merchant who hired me for protection. But that's all I know. Hmm. And where's this Menhart disappeared off to? No idea. I blacked out after the attack. Only came to my senses once I got here. I don't even know where here is. Who ambushed that wagon? A knight. He's been following us for a while. And where did he go? I don't know. I got a beating, and then I passed out. Do you know what you were carrying in that wagon? <coughs> I never asked Menhart that. <coughs> Can I see your wound? Are you a quack? Sort of. Hmm. That's a deep wound to the flank and you're still losing blood. You need to staunch it. Will you help me? I can try. Tell me more about the night. Where's the coin? What? What coin? I will not repeat the question. I, I don't know about any coin. Let's ah! Don't! Where are those sacks you took from the wagon? Sacks? They're behind the shed. That's him! That's got to be that knight! Is that all? Did you take anything else? Uh-uh. Fuck! Stop! Stop right there! I'm happy to see you again, sir. Hmm, likewise. No doubt you have many questions. I certainly do. We will talk. Not here, however. The here, bulls have ears. Just as you ordered. Let's meet at the pond after sunset. You'll find me waiting by the big willow tree. You'll say what you have to say right here. By Arn Heiling, you are a brave one. But if you want to know anything, come to the pond after sunset.
So here I am. What do you have to tell me? I brought you here because I did not want to cause an alarm at the tavern. I am very sorry, but you made a mistake coming here alone. And it will be your last. Wait! You wish to make your peace with God? Very well. But be quick. I just want to know why you ambushed that wagon. You make no sense. Did your accomplices not tell you when they sent you after me? Accomplices? What are you talking about? I'm here on behalf of Sir Radzi Kobila. Radzi Kobila? I do not understand. I was looking for the counterfeit coins and I still am. I'd heard those men were transporting them in that wagon. When I saw you with the charcoal burners, I assumed it was they who sent you. No, definitely not. Then we have a common aim. I have also been pursuing the counterfeiters for some time. My name is Ulrich. It is true our meeting has not begun well. But if it is the truth that you are sent by Kobila, then we can assist each other. What do you mean? I found out many things, but there are still questions I cannot answer. And the last man who knew anything is now dead. What man was that? Mainhart, the merchant from Passau. Listen, I will explain everything to you. But first, I need you to do something for me. Oh, really? You will introduce me to a certain person, and I will tell you everything I've learned. Who do you mean? Master Tobias Feifa. If you truly serve Sir Radzik, then you must know him. I think I know who you mean. What do you want him for? I have here a written confession which tells how those forgeries are made. But I do not understand such technical matters. Master Pfeiffer, however... We'll definitely be able to make sense of it. And you'll give it to me, just like that. It seems I have little choice. This is the last lead I have. In the meantime, I will return to Sasso and see what I might learn there. Shouldn't you go with me to see Feyfar? No. I must remain in Sassau. I have some uh, loose ends that must be tied. What's your name, anyway? I told you. I am Ulrich. Just Ulrich? It is enough. Because you look like a knight. They seldom have just one name. It is true. I have a horse, armor, a sword and a shield. But there are many ways to acquire such things these days. As I am sure you know. So you're not a knight? I am a trustworthy soldier in the service of a nobleman. That is all you need to know. I'd like to know more, but I have a feeling you won't tell me. Your feeling is correct. Who are you working for? I understand why you wish to know. But this does not mean I am at liberty to tell you. Very well. I shan't beat it out of you. Tell me what you know about the false coins. Do you know, Passau? No. What is it? A city in Bavaria. Passau is a city of trade. All the currencies in Christendom change hands there. I see. And that would include Prague Groschen? Some months ago, counterfeit Groschen were discovered to be circulating there. They are made from copper plated with silver. The Paso Alderman began to investigate and learned that a family of money changers was involved. They were bringing the forged coins in from Bohemia and sending back real ones. My liege lord is allied to the Paso Alderman, so they requested that he deal with the matter. And so he sent you? Yes. He needed a man that he could trust absolutely. And what about that wagon? What happened there exactly? I followed Menhard from Passau. I had reason to suspect the connection with Sassau.
So they were transporting false groschen on that wagon? Yes. On their way here, they brought real coin. Groschen, foreigns, francs and the like. But now, the sacks were full of counterfeits. What do you mean about the connection with Sassau? The matter was investigated in Passau, and the executioner extracted information from those who were arrested. They told him that the coins were made in a monastery. What, in the monastery itself? I cannot say. I know only what the Passau scribe wrote down in his reports of the interrogations. Why did you let them get here before attacking? I wanted to discover where they hand over their coins which I failed to do. Besides, Mainhardt had an armed escort, and they kept two busy roads and lodged at inns throughout their journey. Until he came to this godforsaken trek, I cannot guess why he came here, but it was the perfect opportunity to strike. What happened on that track? I ambushed them. I took down two. But that bastard man had cut the horses loose and rode away. What next? While I was chasing Manhart, those charcoal burners came and stole what they could. Before I could catch him, his horse threw him and he broke his neck. So we won't get anything out of him? Unfortunately not. What happened to Manhart? He is dead, of course. I know, but what did he do with his body? I buried it. He was a bastard. But I am not one to leave Christian remains rotting in the woods. I see. And where is his grave? He ran from the wagon uphill along the path to the north. Along the way there is an old ruined cabin. I buried him behind it. And don't think I don't know why you ask. Robbing graves is shameful. That's not it at all. If you say so. Very well. I'll go and see Master Feyfar. Godspeed. I will wait in Sasso at the Wagoners Inn. <sighs> I'll have to get something to eat. I'm starting to get hungry. I'm glad you're here, Henry. What's happening, sir? Uncle Sahanush sent for me. No doubt he wants to give me another ear bashing about the error of my ways, and he said to bring you two. Oh, Sakra. That doesn't sound good. Indeed. I wonder what he wants to lecture me about this time. And you, because you're going with me. All right. We should get going then, shouldn't we, Sir Hans? The sooner we get it over and done with, the better. Come after dawn. At this hour, Hanish will still be asleep, and I really don't want to wake him up. All right, see you then.
The Lord be praised. What brings you to me? Master Fafar, Sir Radzik sent me to you. Did he? He must think highly of you. I do the best I can. That's good, because this is damned important. Silver is our most valuable asset. How can I help with these um, evil forebodings of yours? Hmm. Sir Radzik may make light of it, but a large quantity of silver has been discovered hereabouts, and no one is guarding the Skullit's mines, the most likely source. You really think someone could be stealing the silver from the mines? I would have thought that would be quite a job, wouldn't it? It certainly would, which is why I'd like you to go and check out not only the mine gallery, but also the yard with the smelter and the waterworks. See what kind of state it's all in, and if anything looks suspicious. Is that the yard next to the Scallet's mill? That's the one. I don't know what state it's in now. There used to be a stock of charcoal and smelted silver there. A silver store? Could there really be any left? I doubt it. I'd be surprised if it was still standing at all. What about these waterworks? What's there? A stamping mill and washing troughs. They're on the bend in the river below the castle. You can't miss them. There are big tanks and equipment all around. You said mine gallery. Just one. Boy, there's such a maze there that it would take a week to crawl through the place. There's only one gallery I'm interested in, at the foot of the hill by a small fish pond. Why just that one? Because I was expecting to find a scene there. All the indications pointed to it. So if anyone is stealing silver, it'll be right there. Should I be expecting trouble then? Well, I definitely wouldn't treat the job like a visit to church on Sunday. You could find yourself facing that pack of hungry dogs trailing the army. Or a band of brigands. I see. Well, you and Sir Radza can rely on me. That's all clear. I'll get going. See you later. Master Fafar, I need to speak with you. I found out something about the counterfeit coin. Did you really? Do tell. Close to Rovna, I came across a wagon that was transporting the false coins. Unfortunately, I came too late. The carter and his men were dead. Damn and blast. Do you know who did it? Yes. A certain knight turned up there. Turned out he was also after the forgers. Well, that is indeed unexpected. Tell me, what did he say? His name is Ulrich. He looked like a knight, but he refused to show his master's colours. Ulrich, you say? Hmm. Could be anyone. Can you describe him? An older man with a moustache. But for all his grey hairs, he seemed pretty tough to me. Hmm. Doesn't match anyone I've heard of. But then we don't even know if Ulrich is his real name. I asked him who his liege was, but he refused to tell me. We live in such strange times. In days past, knights would vie with each other to see who could extol their liege's name the loudest. And today, they take assumed names, hide their emblems and sneak around the land like thieves. I got the impression he was hiding his identity because his master's at odds with Sir Radzik. That may well be. As a staunch supporter of the king, Sir Radzik has many enemies. He told me that the fake money was being taken to Passau in exchange for gold coins then that real money was being brought back to the Bohemian lands. That would explain why those fakes bear the Passau counter mark. His master is allied with the Passau alderman, and they told him to sort it all out. I wonder who could be behind it all. He gave me these documents to show you. He seemed to think they prove he was telling the truth. They're the records of the interrogations in Passau, and some other things he said you'd understand better than him. Hmm. Let me see. We, the aldermen of the city of Passau, mm -hmm. interrogation held this day, mm -hmm. put to pain by the quester. The place of origin is a monastery in the land of Bohemia. Hmm. Which certainly confirms my suspicion that something underhand is going on in Sassau. Coin assay report. Copper core coated with amalgam. Ah, but this is interesting. Here's an outlying description of how the forgeries are made. I'll have to study it more closely. Uh, we command Herr Ulrich, 
Can think, yeah. To investigate and let no man stand in his way. This looks like the original safe conduct. It has the seal of the Paso alderman. But they certainly didn't pen this. How do you know? I recognise the hand. It's a Clement of Caplitz, the high scribe of the Rosenbergs. The Rosenbergs? Who's that? A rich and powerful family in South Bohemia. Burgrave Henry III is a great rival of our King Wenceslas. So what does all this mean? Well, it certainly explains why your knight is so mysterious. Anyway, we should be careful. And we shall begin our investigation. The documents show they use silver amalgam for coating copper fakes. That's a lead we can follow. Amal what? Silver amalgam. It's produced from quicksilver and silver. Well, that doesn't sound like something just anyone can get hold of. Hmm. You're quite right. You will go to Sasso at once. Look around the forges in the city. Someone must be working copper for them. I, meanwhile, will take counsel with Sir Radzik and then follow after you. Where shall we meet? At the inn on Sasso Market Square. Did you find out what actually happened? Folks say it was on account of our silver and how Sir Radzik sides with the king. God be with you. So, what did Master Pfeiffer have to say? I consulted him and we definitely have a starting point. Tell me more. Master Pfeiffer found out they need copper sheets for the core of the coins and quicksilver for the alma... alma... Uh, uh, the other part? I see. They have such materials at the monastery. Exactly. That's why I'm interested in the local forges. Yes, that is good. Yesterday, I heard people from the craftsman's yard by the monastery complaining. They said they could not sleep at night because the blacksmith works all the time till dawn. I see. That's certainly worth asking about. Have you heard anything else? You said they use quicksilver. There is a painter lodging here who is painting the church in Ujits. I heard him complain also. He said that he went to the monastery for quicksilver and it was all gone. Well, that's something to follow up as well. Thanks. I'm honoured that a knight such as you takes an interest in me. I hear you've had some problems with the supply of Quicksilver. Problems? I should say so. For the third time this month they've told me there's none. There's no Quicksilver to be had, they said. And who exactly are you talking about? Who's holding back the goods on you? A monastery overseer, or his assistant, more like. So what did the overseer have to say to you? Nothing. Apparently he doesn't deal in such trifles. Leaves it all to his assistant, the pompous git. Surely such valuable material can't just vanish. Where can it be? I wish I knew. Every time I ask for the red paint, there's a different reason why they haven't got the quicksilver to mix it. Once they said the goods never arrived, and another time that the wagon carrying it was ambushed. Then it went astray somewhere. And you think they're lying? Jesus, what do I know? Well, it seems pretty strange to me. Three times in a row, the same thing goes missing. There's bad luck and then there's something else. What do you need Quicksilver for? I don't. They do. To mix up the red pigment for me. I'm painting the church in Ujits. Can you imagine how stupid those biblical scenes look without red? Not really. Then be glad you can. My eyes are just to imagine it. That's all I need to know for now. Ah. But wouldn't you care to buy something before you go? Or play a game? I really need some money. I've been waiting here a while and my stay is getting expensive. Why not? Show me what you have to offer. Why 
one bear. I'm honored that a knight such as you takes an interest in me. Do you have any quicksilver in stock? Who's asking? Nobody, I'm just asking. Then I don't have any. That sounds almost as if you don't want to sell it to me. It's not that I don't want to, it's that I can't. Can't you? In the Sassau Monastery? That seems unlikely. It looks more like you're lining your own pockets to me. I wonder what people would have to say about that. It's not. I'm not. Oh, shit. Get to the point. Uh, they came for me at noon. Directly to the office. The overseer was somewhere on his rounds. Some night, it was. Without a crest. Armed. He called himself Sir Yezhek, and he had a lackey with him called Rapporta, a scruffy fellow with a yellow cape. Always whistling he was. They told me they wanted all the quicksilver we order for the monastery. Of course, I told him that wouldn't be possible. And then what, did they threaten you? Not at first. They tried to bribe me, and when I refused, they started threatening. How did you hand it over to them? I take it up the hill behind the monastery here. There's a big tree there with a small chapel underneath. Sometimes Rapporta is there waiting for me. If not, I leave it there. What did they threaten you with? They said they know people in the monastery. That they'd have me thrown out and beaten for stealing. And you had been stealing? I mean, before then? You know how it is. I... Work my fingers to the bone and they pay me a pittance. So they knew about you? Yes, they knew my name, everything. Very well, thank you. Take care now. Why are you just sitting around? Why not? Admiring the view? People just do not appreciate a lovely view these days. Does the name Rapporta ring any bells for you? Rapporta, you say? Rapporta. Hmm. No, I can't hear any bells ringing at all. Look, you little jester, I'm investigating a crime against the king on the direct orders of Sir Radzig. Are you really going to keep pretending you don't know anything? Hang on! What's all this about a crime against the king? I'm just keeping an eye on things. When a wagon comes in, I make sure nobody robs it. I get a commission for that, that's it! See? That didn't hurt a bit. Where's Rapporta? I don't know. He's been staying in town lately. He hardly ever shows up here. It seems he's keeping an eye on someone there. I don't know who. Who comes to fetch them? I don't know. Some people. They don't speak. They just look mean. Take the goods and go!
Bit of friendly advice. You're wasting your time here. Wrap it to Scarpet and won't be coming back this way anytime soon. You might as well pack up and go home. What? That bastard owes me a dozen groschen. Damn it! Now what? Ah, oh, well. No use hanging around here anyway. In any case, thanks for the information. I could have been stuck here for weeks. The Lord be praised. What brings you to me? You look different, Master. So as to fit in? I don't want it known that I'm in town. Why? I don't want to alarm our prey. Gossip spreads quickly, and if those scoundrels learn we're onto them, they'll flee. And that does make sense. So what have you found out so far? I found out where they get their quicksilver from. You were right, it was the monastery. Hmm. It was the only logical explanation. It changed hands on the hill behind the monastery. Have you been there to have a look around? I have, but I didn't find anything interesting. And have you found out who's behind it? Someone called Rapata. Not much, but it's a start. At least it's not a common name. Listen, Henry, I had another thought on the way here. Those counterfeiters have to have a punch die to make the fake coins. Yes, of course. That's sophisticated work. There's a man I know who works at the monastery yard. Master engraver Jerome of Silesia. You don't suppose that he's... No, not that, God forbid. I know him well. He'd never do anything like that. But he runs an engraving workshop, so he might have heard something. Very well. I'll ask him. But ask with tact. I don't want him getting offended. And I prefer you not to mention me at all. I'll try to think of something. That's all. Goodbye. Ah! 
my respects to you. How goes the work, Master? Getting there, getting there. You need something, my boy? What are you doing here, anyway? You're in an engraver's shop, my boy. We're engraving, of course. Yeah, but engraving what? And what's it used for? Oh, we engrave wood and stone as well as metal. Here in the monastery, it's mostly about decoration. You've got quite a large workshop, Master. You don't do all the work alone, surely? I'm usually here with my apprentice, Florian. Of course, by simple observation, you'll note that this is not currently the case, and I'm here alone. Which means that either I'm a liar or something out of the ordinary has occurred. Um, I see. I think. So what's happened to Florian? He shares the fate of the pharaohs for today. The fifth scourge of Egypt did smite him. The plague. Or so his message advised me. Jesus Christ, the plague? Do remain calm. I'm quite certain the plague from which Florian is suffering wasn't a judgment from on high. Or if it was, it was a judgment on excessive drinking. I'm told such an ailment can be of truly biblical proportions. What's he like, your apprentice, Florian? I'm afraid that his exuberant youth has taken its toll. He's been acting strangely of late. I fear he has delusions of persecution. I don't really know what you mean, at all. Recently, for example, he told me that someone was following him. And the very next day he bought a padlock from the blacksmith and locked up his chest. As though I would ever sneak into it. In any case, why the interest? Are you looking for him? Something like that. May I ask why? I have a message for him. A message? Who would be interested in that wastrel? Other than his furious and deeply disappointed master, of course. About your question, you'll find him at home. No doubt feverishly dying. He sleeps in the baker's cellar. Ah. Thank you. Does Florian have any enemies? A man such as he certainly owes money at every turn, and the parents of local girls are undoubtedly displeased with his attempts to propagate. However, most recently it was that fury from the baths who accosted him in quite a spectacular rage. A woman from the baths? What did she do? The harpy nearly tore all Florian's hair out. I don't frequently feel sorry for my ne'er-do-well apprentice, but on that occasion I made an exception. Do you have any idea why she did it? She was screaming about some girl, some flighty bathmaid, Esther. I would say that Florine had felt the joys of spring and acted accordingly, although one would have thought they'd be used to that sort of thing at the bathhouse. Thank you. I'll leave you to your work. Good luck to you. from me. I hear you're at odds with Apprentice Florian. At odds? I'll give you at odds. It's that sod's fault they took my Esther. Poor girl. I shudder to think what's become of her. What exactly happened? This man came in wanting a bath, and Esther with it. She doesn't normally offer that kind of service, but I didn't see the harm, so I sent her in to him. And suddenly I hear screams. So I run out, and I see the bastard pulling her out of the tent and shoving her into a boat. I'm sorry they took her, but what exactly has it got to do with Florian? 
They shouted at me to tell Florian that when he rises up, he'll get the girl back. I assume that Florian knows this, Esther. You know village girls. They don't get much of a choice. Every other knave has a turnip for a brain. And if they don't, they're relatives. And then some young dandy turns up who writes her little poems. What's the poor girl to do? And this is how it ends. She should have stuck with the turnip heads. Where can I find this Florian? I'd like to ask him a few questions. He works in the engraver's workshop at the monastery craftsman's yard. And if he's not there, he'll be holed up like the rat he is in the cellar he rents from the baker. He's afraid of me, for sure. What did the bailiff make of it? Don't even get me started on that. He's another fine... I won't say what. I told him everything, but he says he won't do nothing about it. How's that then? He wouldn't tell me to my face, of course. But people here don't think much of us. There's some as reckon my Esther deserves what she got. Poor girl. It sounds like you were close to Esther. I loved her like my very own. She came to me as an orphan, like a wolf child she was. I raised her and taught her and gave her a job, and now she's gone. Who knows if she's even alive? May the Lord watch over you. Jesus Christ be praised. You look quite sprightly for an invalid. What? Who the hell are you? My name's Henry, and I'm making inquiries for Sir Radzig Kobola. And what do you want from me? Straight to the point then. All right. I've been investigating counterfeit money, and the trail led me straight to you. Does the name Rapporteur mean anything to you? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe? Don't bother. I know you know him. You make the punch dies for the counterfeiters. How do you hand them over? Do you know where their workshop is? I can't say anything. I'll deny everything and you've got nothing on me. No evidence, just accusations. You just incriminated yourself. One man's word against another. Like I said, I'll deny everything. And do you really think that's going to help you? Your word means nothing. You've got the tools, the knowledge and the workshop. The only thing missing is a motive, but I'm guessing it's money. I don't give a fuck about money. So what then? Those bastards kidnapped Esther. If I don't cooperate, they'll kill her. Who is Esther? My girl, of course. That scum took her right out of the bathhouse. I'm sorry about that. Me too. Listen, I'll tell you everything, I promise. But only if I know that Esther's safe. What, so I'm to go searching for her in the woods? I know where they're keeping her, but nobody will help me. And what can puny little me do face with those strapping great villains? Look, Florian, I'm sorry for what you're going through, honestly. But I'm not the only one who's after these people. As soon as they get wind of something, they'll be out of here and Esther will be gone with them. If Rapata finds I've told you anything, they'll kill her. Not if I catch Rapata first. He's here in town, isn't he? Yes, he is. They found me in the tavern one evening, caught me when I went to the ship pile. They started to badger me about working for them. They? Yes, Rapata. And a night they called Sir Yezek. And then what? They explained what they wanted from me and I told them to sod off. I'm guessing that didn't go down too well. It wasn't all that bad. They just threw me on the dung heap and left. And I thought it was just a drunkard's joke. But then they took Esther.
Where will I find Rapata? He's usually wherever I am. What does that mean? He watches me. Everywhere I go. And when I'm at home, he sits on the bench in the square, watching my house. So he's there now? Hard to say. Sometimes I see him in the tavern on the green, buying supplies. All right. At least I know where to start. And you go to work tomorrow, you hear? Why? Because we have to lure him out. And besides, your master will surely be glad to see you. I have my doubts. How did you hand over the punch die to them? Rapata waited for me behind the church. I didn't want to give it to them without seeing Esther first. And did they let you? Yes, although I don't really know why. They took me to a derelict farm in the Scalitz Hills. My poor Esther, they'd scared her half to death. So at least you know she's alive. Who knows? It was a while ago. And they never let her go, even after I did what they wanted. They said they'd be needing more. More punch dice? They wear out over time. And they have to be replaced regularly. Why didn't you tell anyone? At first I took it for a bad joke. And then, when they snatched Esther, there was nothing to be done. I suppose I'd better go. I'd hate the bastard to get away. Go. I hope you get revenge. Good luck to you. Good day to you. What do you need? Do you work any copper here, Master Blacksmith? Why do you ask? I'd want to commission you to make something. Then you'd best go elsewhere. I never use copper. That's not what I heard. What? I was told in town that you bought all the other blacksmiths' copper. I'm being made a fool of yet again, it seems. Anything else? I still have work to do. What can you tell me about the Sassau blacksmiths? Well, there's Mikesh. He's honest enough, and a fair hand at everyday things. And then there's Master Otter. He used to have talent, but now he's too old, and too proud to admit it. Take care now. God be with you, good sir. Your father says you don't work any copper. We don't. I've heard differently around town. They say your father's bought up all the copper to be had. Are you calling me a liar? Or my father? You're asking for it, boy. You're right. It's nothing to me either way. Right. So clear off. I mean, beside the fact I'm here on behalf of the Royal Burgrave Sir Radze Kobola investigating a grievous crime against the Crown. What? What are you talking about? I'd let you read my Bill of Authority, but I doubt you're educated enough to understand it. I'm... I'm so sorry. I didn't realise. If I'd known, of course I wouldn't. I mean, you understand, don't you? Stop prattling, for God's sake, and start telling me the truth. What's the story with the copper at your forge? You're right. We do make copper sheets here at night. So why all the secrecy about it? Father forbade me to talk about it. I don't know why. I didn't ask. Who buys those sheets from you? I don't know. I've never set eyes on him. Father doesn't like to talk about it. Your father has some serious explaining to do. I'm so sorry. If I'd known who you were, I'd never have taken such liberties. Never mind. You weren't to know who I am. You were just protecting your father's business interests like any good son. Thank you. Farewell. <coughs> So back to that copper, Master Blacksmith. What? I thought I told you I don't work with copper. 
Your son put it quite differently. What's that? What are you blabbering on about? Don't be angry with him. I didn't give him any choice. All right. I suppose there's no point lying. We do make copy sheets here, and I want you to keep it quiet. Why? Pays me good money, and the people I do it for. I wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of them. Did they threaten you? They didn't have to. Just by the look of them, I could say I needed to shut my mouth and do what they wanted. And did they ever tell you who they were? Do you know where to find them? I know a little. I'll show some understanding. There's nothing but trouble in it for me. I'll lose the work and be left looking over my shoulder for some thugs to come and burn down my house. Or worse. If you lie down with dogs, you shouldn't complain about the fleas. There's no need for threats. We can both benefit here. If I tell you everything I know, you can help me with a certain small matter. One that'll cover up for my loss of earnings. You've got cheek. Not only are you in with the counterfeiter gang, but you lied to me on top of it. You should be on your knees begging for mercy right now. I'm not trying to make a profit. I didn't know what they were doing. But now you do know, and you've still got the cheek to try to strike a deal with me. So Rad's are definitely going to be hearing about this. You're right. I I'm sorry, I overstepped the mark. I certainly didn't mean to offend one of Lord Radzik's men. One evening I got a visit from this scruffy beggar calling himself Rapota. He had a yellow cape on and kept whistling to himself. There was a knight with him too, but he didn't give his name. They told me what I had to do, how much I'd get for it, and I had to keep my mouth shut. Hmm. And where can I find this Rapota? Or the knight? I don't know exactly. But I've always left the wagon with the goods behind the monastery, on the hill there, next to a small chapel under a big tree. Anything else? No. I swear that's all I know. Well, that'll do me for now. <clears throat> Young man, about that matter I need help with. I'll gladly pay you. First, tell me what's going on. I recently tried to buy Master Armourer Otto Rabstein's business for my son Vitus. But that old fool wouldn't listen to reason. He said he couldn't understand his legacy being taken over by a clod like my Vitus. Despite the insult, I doubled my offer. But Master Otto still wouldn't budge. And what is it you need from me? I thought I'd show Otto that Vitus isn't such a dolt as he thinks. But for that I need someone experienced in combat. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. What's your plan? Otter's busy making a very pretty suit of armour for the bailiff. So I was thinking, if we could show that pretty armour of his is absolutely useless, he'd be disgraced. And how am I supposed to see to that? Well, I would reckon we'd arrange a duel of champions with bludgeons. You'll put on Vitus's armour, and Otter will send his champion in that tin shit of his. You invite the bailiff to watch, and Otto will be made a laughingstock in front of everyone. Then what do I get out of it? Vitus will let you have the cuirass from his suit of armour, and I'll throw in a few groschen on top. Sounds good. And I'm sure a fellow like you will be glad to be on good terms with the best armourer for miles around, eh? That remains to be seen. Agreed. I'll get to work on it. Wonderful. Go to Otter first and talk him into it. Then go to the bailiff so he can announce it and get spectators. The more people see it, the better. We'll bring the armour to you at the combat arena. God be with you. Master Armourer, I have a message for you from Blacksmith Zack. If it's another one of his so-called generous offers, you can go straight back and tell him I'm not selling, and that's that. No, this is another matter. 
Vitus wants to challenge you to a duel. What? <laughs> Me fight with that brat? Zack must have lost his mind entirely. But that's not how it will be. The real duel will be between your pieces of handiwork. How's that? It will be a duel with bludgeons. No bloodshed. At most, a few bruises and some dents in the armor. Zack chose me to wear Vitus armor. And so I'm to choose a champion of my own? That sounds reasonable. Good. So let's agree on the time and place. Hold your horses, young fella. I've got a counter offer for you. Now I'm sure Zack is paying you well. I won't deny it. I could pay you more. And I'd tailor make a Kiros just for you. What do you say? You mean if I fight as you're a champion instead? I'm not sure how Zack would take it. No, no. You fight on Zack's side and lose. That's not very honourable. And Zack's constant slander and mudslinging are the height of honour, are they? Well, it's true Zack hasn't behaved like an honourable craftsman. See? So, will you help me? All right. I'll do it. Wonderful. Zack won't know what hit him. So, choose the time and place. What, me? You're the one being challenged, so it's your right. Well, it's all the same to me. Go and sort it out with the bailiff. He should know about it anyway, so I don't look like a troublemaker. All right. See you later. I'll be back in two shakes. God be with you. I'll bring it right away. I'm here on behalf of blacksmith Zack. Zack? What does that madman want now? Don't tell me. It's another complaint about the master armorer. Well, you can tell Zack if you waste another minute of my time with that I'll pathetic feud of his. I'll have him up for disrespecting the office of the bailiff. No, it's not a complaint this time. In fact, Zack came up with an idea to settle the dispute once and for all. Is that so? Well, that's a different kettle of fish. That's just what I was after. You have my full attention, friend. What's his plan? A duel. Jesus Christ! Has he lost his wits entirely? But don't worry, Goodman Baylor. No one will get killed. It will only be a duel with bludgeons. Zack chose me as his champion. I'll be wearing a suit of armour made by his son, Vitus, and I'll fight Otter's champion. Whoever falls first, loses. <laughs> that sounds like a fine spectacle for the village green. Naturally, I'll have to be present to ensure nothing untoward happens. <laughs> Your presence is certainly expected, Bailiff. We'd like you to referee the whole duel. Very well. We'll have it on the marketplace in the front of the church. But when? That's up to you. We can't do it now. It's nearly nightfall. We wouldn't see well enough to enjoy the show. All right, Bailiff. I'll come another time. Take care now. My respects to you. I'll come about the duel. We can announce it right now. Let's do it. I'll have it announced around town. You come along at just the right time. It'll be a fine show for the townsfolk, and I'll finally get that pair and their constant squabbling off my back. Farewell. Good citizens of Sassau! Our township has long been plagued by a protracted dispute. As you are no doubt aware, Zack, the blacksmith of the Monastery Courtyard, and Master Armourer Otto Rabstein have been, for some time, 
at odds. <laughs> that is hammer and tongs, more like. And in so much as it behoves my office as bailiff to settle such disputes and maintain peace and order, I have decided to resolve the blacksmith's quarrel by unconventional means, whilst affording an entertaining spectacle. In short, we shall let them knock each other's teeth out. <laughs> However, since it ill befits two respectable tradesmen to maul each other on the market square like a pair of cocks on a dung heap, each of them has elected a champion. Zack, the blacksmith, has appointed to fight in his stead Henry of Scarlet and Master Otto Rabstein's champion will be... <laughs> Please, introduce yourself, Sir Knight. Master Otter will fight for Master Otter. I don't need some young pup to take my place. <laughs> I remind you that this will be a duel with bludgeons alone. And until first blood is shed. Come, folks, be sensible for heaven's sake. We don't want any maiming here or, God forbid, murder. So, if both contestants are ready, let us begin. made a complete fool of you. I'm sorry. Otto was just too good for me. Damn it. I should have known you weren't up to it. Well, I'll just have to think of something else. But the bailiff said the duel would end the dispute. Quiet! Don't annoy me more than you already have. Now get out of my sight before I shove the bludgeon up your ass. <laughs> 